Now, the gap between males and females is absolutely huge when we break it down by numbers. Hey guys, Fitness Science here. We're going to be speaking about Laurel Hubbard today, who recently competed at the Tokyo 2020 Olympics in the women's 87 and over class. She failed her opening two snatch attempts at 120 kilos and then both of her 125 attempts and essentially bombed out of the competition. Now, this has ignited a bit of a debate about the role of transgender women in sport, especially around whether transgender women have an advantage considering they've been exposed to super physiological amounts or not even super physiological, just natural amounts of testosterone for, in Laurel's case, over three decades before she transitioned to a woman. So the advantage conferred by that is something that is up for debate and we're going to be discussing the science Today. So if we go back in time, Laurel was actually born a male and her best lifts as a male junior in her home country of New Zealand were an 135 kilo snatch and a 170 kilogram clean and jerk. Her best total was 300 kilos and this was in 1998. Now in 2012, at the age of 34, she decided to transition to a woman and she underwent hormone therapy and has been on uh, hormone therapy ever since. And yet after 2012, she won an event in Australia and then qualified for the 2018 Commonwealth Games and then won another two gold medals at the 2019 Pacific Games in Samoa. And then she won a gold at the Rome Games in 2020 and qualified for Tokyo. Now the International Olympic Committee essentially allowed her to compete based on her results, but also based on their overall motto of the overriding sporting objective is and remains the guarantee of fair competition. And to ensure this fair competition, they essentially have two rules that they impose on transgender women that they must prove in order to compete. These two rules are that the athlete must demonstrate that total testosterone is below 10 nanomoles per liter for at least a whole year before their first competition. Essentially, they're saying that 12 months time is a sufficient amount of time to remove the advantage uh, of having high testosterone levels and then switching over to a woman. Um, they're saying that 12 months is long enough. And the second point that they impose on the women is that the total testosterone level must remain below 10 nanomoles per liter for the entire duration of the competition. So really their belief is that that 10 nanomole per liter um, level is essentially the level at which a woman gets under that, then they're fine. And the unfair advantage is wiped away as long as they can stay under 10 nanomoles per liter for a year, then you can compete in a woman's sporting event. But does this actually remove the advantage? Let's take a look at what the science says about testosterone, physiology, and the biology of being a man and then switching over to a woman, do you actually lose the advantage just by adhering to the rules of keeping your levels under 10 nanomoles per litre for an entire year? Um, or are those advantages essentially kept for life? And I think you know where this is going. Essentially, the advantages are kept for a very long time if you have gone through puberty as a male. Let's look at what the science says now. So essentially during puberty, testosterone levels in men um, are about 20 times higher than females. Before this, it's about the same, but as soon as puberty hits for males and females, there's a huge divergence in genes and testosterone especially is one of those genes that um, the HPTA axis kicks in or HPG axis kicks in and the males have 20 times higher testosterone than females. Now we know what testosterone does, that's greater muscle mass, that's more muscle mass on your frame, that's greater power development as well as force output because of having the more muscle on your frame. There are other downstream effects like body shape, less adipose tissue generally on average in men, stiffer connective tissue, greater upper body strength, more cardiovascular changes because men generally have a bigger heart which means they can pump more blood and a more, again on average and things equal, a man is going to be more cardiovascularly efficient than a woman, especially because men have greater heart volumes on average. But the most important thing for weightlifting, especially in Laurel Hubbard's case, is that they have a greater ability for force generation and power output. So let's look at some actual numbers here. A systematic review came out just in 2020 that was really good and looked at all the recent evidence about transgender women in sport. Now, the gap between males and females is absolutely huge when we break it down by numbers, especially where upper body strength is required or any sport that requires some form of power development and muscle mass. For example, the gap between males and females in field hockey drag flicks is greater than 50%, and the difference between the greatest tennis serve speed between men and women is almost 20%. The male advantage, purely based on how males performed versus females, um, you can really see that all of the sports that require 
like some form of upper body strength or large amounts of power development are pretty much dominated by men and weightlifting is third on this list as in men are dominating women in weightlifting by um, almost 30% if not over. Some further numbers for you. From 1998 to 2018 when the 69 kilogram class was common in weightlifting to both men and women, males outperform females by 30% and in open categories where there is no weight limit, men are outperforming women by up to 40%. The powerlifting record is 65% higher in the men's open weight class as opposed to the females open weight class in the World Open Classic records. And even women who are 60% heavier than males still can't overcome the differences in strength. This year at the Tokyo Olympics, the male in the lightest weight class would have got a gold medal in the second heaviest women's weight class of 87 kilos. And this is exactly why men and women are segregated in sport. It's because the difference in testosterone is enormous and the benefits that you get from having that normal male level of testosterone is absolutely huge as we can see from the numbers and essentially no female could ever be reasonably expected to overcome this enormous difference just using their natural level of testosterone which is down near the one nanomole per liter range for their life basically and they don't go through that puberty and yet laurel hubbard is different she did go through puberty and her levels of testosterone, I assume, were well over one nanomole per liter. And that's going to have some form of benefit. But the key question is, is the male dominance that you get from testosterone suppressed when you follow the International Olympic Committee's orders of reducing your testosterone levels to 10 or under for the 12 month period? Well, the short answer is no. In terms of muscle mass, one to three years of testosterone suppression and estrogen supplementation in 19 transgender women from 18 to 37 years when they got their test levels down to one nanomole per liter, that's nine under what the International Olympic Committee is saying, they got it down to one. Thigh muscle after the first year had only decreased by 9%. And over the three year period, it only decreased a further 3%. So over the entire three year period, the transgender women who suppressed their testosterone levels only lost 12% from their thigh measurement in terms of muscle mass. And compared with the trans men in the study, who are born women and transition to men, the transgender women still had greater levels of muscle mass than even the transgender men. This is just how powerful going through puberty is for a male and having those years of testosterone secretion for the entire duration of your teens. Uh, this is what Laurel Hubbard exactly went through. And then over a further 12 studies, the average loss in muscle mass as measured by DEXA was three to five percent. Now, three to five percent loss on muscle mass isn't really going to make a huge dent considering that the difference between men and women is up to 40 percent in weightlifting in some weight classes. So three to five percent loss of muscle mass, I don't really see that as translating to a 40 percent decrease in strength for a person who has been a man and then transitions to a woman. It really doesn't seem likely that that is going to knock out the 40 percent difference that men have over women. In terms of strength. Muscle strength after the 12 months of testosterone suppression was pretty much equal to their baseline strength. They didn't really lose strength at all. And there's further evidence that hand grip strength didn't really shift too much when transgender women had suppressed their testosterone levels. But the biggest issue in the weightlifting community is that the advantage that going through puberty has on a human body is absolutely enormous. And even suppressing your levels to 10 nanomoles per liter doesn't really get rid of that advantage at all. In terms of contractile tissue, muscle mass development, just the general muscle protein synthesis, all those years of muscle protein synthesis that a human body has gone through when they have high normal levels of testosterone going through puberty, can't really get rid of that very easily as evidenced by studies. Even after eight years, the trans women did lose significant amount of muscle mass, but it still didn't get them to a normative reference range for someone who has been a woman their entire life. So I think this raises is a really important debate about transgender women in sport. The studies have shown that you can't really get rid of the strength and the muscle mass gains that you have had from going through puberty and having testosterone levels of a male for many, many years. Now, Laurel Hubbard only transitioned to a woman at the age of 34. That was say 18 to 20 years of high normal levels of testosterone where muscle protein synthesis is high, the muscle building capacity of her body was high, and just generally her ability to build muscle and get stronger as a weightlifter was higher than a woman's would have been. Her levels were probably 20 to 25 times higher than equal women of her age, um, for a good 18 to 20 years of her life. So getting rid of that muscle mass by just suppressing your testosterone levels to 10 nanomoles per liter or under for 12 months, it doesn't really stack up. It's not really going to override the huge amounts of gains that you get from muscle mass 
when you go through puberty and the International Olympic Committee saying that they want to have a fair playing ground in terms of fair competition, it doesn't really stack up when the biology of this situation is that the men who then transition to women are always going to have an advantage. I don't think the social norms of including everyone in sport should override the biology and the science of the human body and what actually goes on through puberty. It's going to be an ongoing debate. I thought I'd do this video just to present my view and give you guys an idea of what's actually happening inside the human body when we go through puberty and just how powerful that actually is as a young male who gains so much more strength and power development as you go through puberty. So thank you so much for watching guys. I really appreciate the support. This channel is all about providing you the literature and science to make better decisions as well as my take on current events in the fitness industry which this one is. So I really hope you've enjoyed the video and enjoy the science and the literature that I present to you guys. If you're interested in more videos like this, please consider subscribing. Um, I really appreciate any support and I'll see you in the next video.